Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember the verses that are being recited in your homes. There were homes right next to the Prophet Sallallahu masjid, which are still there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them that these ayahs are being revealed in your presence. And then he says, wal hikmah. And this is what Imam Shafi'i said, the hikmah in the Quran is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu because the hikmah is the application of the ayat. So remember the blessing of not only having the ayat, but having an, a, an exemplar amongst you that's practicing the ayat. But then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala immediately after that in the next ayah in Surah Al-Hasab, He gives a certain set of embodiments of the people that are of this dhikr, right, with kurna, like remember, be reminded, remind yourselves. And he says, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ وَالْخَاشِعِينَ وَالْخَاشِعَاتِ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقَاتِ وَالصَّائِمِينَ وَالصَّائِمَاتِ وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُوجُهُمْ وَالْحَافِذَاتِ وَذَاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ Those ten people are mentioned. They're all the same, but they're qualities that these people of the ayat and the hikmah embody. So, and then he says, أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرًا Allah has prepared for them a maghfirah wa ajran azimah and a vast reward. So if you look at these ten, he begins with al-muslimu, al-muslimin, inna al-muslimino wa al-muslimat. And the in there is for emphasis. Surely, verily, in truth, those people of Islam. Islam is the entrance into the door of the other nine. Right? Because Islam is in qiyad li awamir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a state of submission. A believer is easy and malleable. When he is given direction from Allah, he accepts the direction. So the Islam is the inqiyad li awamir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's to obey al imtithar you, you, you obey the commands of Allah and you avoid the prohibitions of Allah and yet you're a Muslim. It's an it's a action of the heart and an action of the limbs. And limbs meaning jawarih, right? Not just the, what we say in English is a difficult word because the Arabs use it for the tongue, which is not considered a limb in English. But these jawarih, these seven aspects of your body, that Allah has given you to protect because they're the inroads to the heart. So all of these are, are inroads. And then Jannah has seven doors because each door corresponds to one of these limbs. And, and the, the worst and most difficult one is the tongue, which is why all the other limbs every morning, they're in a state of terror, in a spiritual reality that the Prophet told us uh, about the tongue, right? Asking the tongue to be rightly guided because they say if, you, if you're إذا استقمت استقمنا if you're straight we're straight وإذا عوجزت عوجزنا and if you go astray we go astray that's all the limbs telling the tongue which is why the Prophet said ألا أدلكم على ملاكي هذا كله can I tell you what you can get everything he said أمسك على هذا like take hold of your tongue guard your tongue and this is why the ancient even the ancients knew this this wasn't limited to Islam. Uh, one of the great Chinese sages, he said, because people wanted to rectify the kingdom, they first rectified uh, themselves. And in wanting to rectify themselves, uh, it, they first rectified their own homes. And then in wanting to rectify their own homes, they rectified themselves. And in wanting to rectify themselves, they rectified their actions. And in wanting to rectify their actions, they rectified their tongues. So everything emanates from there. All wars start with words. You know, all hatefulness is expression. It's all expression. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he, he begins why the believers, the, 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 the Muslims, 
And then he tells the Arabs, amanna." The Arabs, they say, we believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't say we believe. لا تقولوا آمنا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم. Say first that you submit and then because your iman has not yet entered into your heart. So first say we submit. So it begins with inqiyad li awamirillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna al-muslimina wal-muslimat. And the reason that this is one of the few verses in the Quran where the women are mentioned alongside the men and this came from a complaint from one of the women. They said, Allah yadhkur al-rijal wa la yadhkurna ya Rasulullah. After that, the ayahs began to uh, incorporate both the... Uh, the dhakr and the untha, which is an indication that if you don't speak up, you don't get your your rights, right? You have to you have to voice something in order for something to change. It's a clear indication of that. That if you don't speak up, things don't change. So then he said, in the mu'minina wal mu'minat, iman. Right? What is iman? Iman is is tasdiq wa fussuri al-iman bi tasdiq wa nutq fihi al-khulf bi tahqiq you should have learned that that iman is conviction in the heart it's amal al-qalb it's not it doesn't relate to the the jawarih the jawarih is islam the heart is iman right and so and then wal qanitin the qanitin are the people that are in because you can be a muslim and be outwardly in a state of submission, like the munafiqun, but it's not penetrated the heart. So the iman penetrates the heart. Once the iman penetrates the heart, then the qunut is the ta'a. It's, it's, it's an internal state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where you're doing the actions based on an inner conviction, not just on because other people are doing it. There's people in the Muslim world still to this day that it's merely a cultural expression. It becomes a cultural identity. There are certain countries where everybody prays, so they pray, whether they believe it or not. Or because the, the, the mutawwa is telling them going to the masjid, they go into the masjid. So the qanut, the qunut is, and that's why salat al-qunut is where at fajr, the time when you should, uh, call on Allah more than any other time. This is why even in Surah Yusuf, when they ask, when his sons ask him to, to ask forgiveness for what they did, he says, I will, right, in the future. He uses the sa, because in the tafsirs they say he was going to wait till fajr to do that, because that's the best time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then wa mu'minu wa qanitin wa qanit wa sadiqin wa sadiqat كُنُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَمْنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَكُنُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ Be with truthful people. The hallmark of, of our faith is sidq, which is related to ikhlas, which is related to sadaqa. And so the sidq is very important. This is why the Prophet ﷺ كَنَ أَصْدَقَ النَّاسِ And his closest companion was called a siddiq he has the highest maqam. And the Siddiqun are immediately after the Prophets because they're the people of Sidq, which is absolute uh, authenticity and integrity. So their inward and their outward are the same. There's no, there's no separation. They're completely a whole human being. They don't have the shadows gone. You know, if you look, shadows only exist when there's some kind of inclination of the sun, but when the sun's directly overhead, the shadow disappears. When the truth is directly, if you're perfectly aligned with the truth, the shadow self disappears. There's nothing there. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing uh, that you're ashamed of. And people, you know, I lived with a man, Murab uh, Tarhaj, who lived in an open tent for his whole life. It was an open book. Everybody saw him. You could see him 24-7. The open book. It's rare to see that, but he was an open book. One man saw him uh, once in a dream. He was ashamed to say, but he said, I saw a man praying naked. And he went to somebody known for interpretation of dreams, and he said, I saw this one of our righteous people praying naked. I didn't understand it. He said, that could only be Marab Tarhaj. Right? Because the, the sitar, the clothes are for sitar. 
So if you have nothing to hide, then you're naked before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're always in reality naked before Allah. That's why on Yom Qiyamah, you're naked. Because that's the reality of the human condition. Allah sees everything. So, sitq. And then, because when you're truthful, you're going to have problems. Tawasaw bil haqqi, right? Haqq is from sitq. Tawasaw bil haqqi. And then, tawasaw bil sabr. Because whenever you're truthful, you're going to have people react against you. It's just the nature of dunya. Because this place is, is a, a, a place of tribulation. Truth forever on the scaffold. Wrong forever on the throne. This is dunya. Truth forever on the scaffold. Wrong forever on the throne. Yet the scaffold sways the future. And beyond the dim unknown standeth God in the shadows, keeping watch over his own. For dunya, falsehood reigns. It's the nature of the abode. But the akhirah, it's all now distinguish yourselves. Here it's it's Darul Ikhtilat. Dunya is an abode, a mixed abode. People mix good and evil together. Ours is of a mingled yarn, good and ill woven together. That's the nature of dunya. But in the akhirah, pure distinction. Imtazu. They're over there, they're over there. And even on the sirat, when the makalib come, these iron, they're like machines, they're some kind of scanning machine that scans the human being. Now we see all these machines, they put them, put them in machines, they scan you, they look at your whole body. These are things that Allah created that scan your soul. And if there's iman, it, 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 if there's like still jahiliya or something in it, it'll clamp on and then the iman will fight with it. This is in the hadith on the sirat. And these are huge. The Prophet said they're made out of, they're like, he said they're like uh, clamps. And he said they're vast machines that are made out of iron. And they clamp on. Because they scan the human crossing the sirat and they see, ah, uh, just like a scanner sees like a tumor. These scanners, they see the reality of your soul. And that's why the Prophet said, help me on the sirat. And the Prophet is at the other end of the sirat, saying, Allahumma sallam, sallam. You know, help, like, like save them, because these are his people. But these, these, some of them get thrown into the hell. They just ride off the sirat. They're just picked up and thrown. These, these are haqqaiq. They're amazing haqqaiq that, that only a modern person could understand, because at the time, they didn't have science fiction. But that's what it would seem like to the Sahaba hearing that about a sirat and these machines that scan the, the soul and then clamp on. Who could imagine those things in the 7th century? It's amazing. <laughs>